uploading the file called Rattling Boss Dead. So today, this episode is brought to you guys by um, my proud sponsors, Annoying Roadworks people, who are uh, making all this really loud ruckus outside my window constantly and it's really messing up my um, wonderful sleep schedule of sleeping through daylight hours and uh, and is always a rude awakening and there we go the loading screen long as ever hey guys welcome to another video so we're picking up exactly where we left off before after our climactic battle with the rattling boss we're gonna drink a potion over here on Loto Papo to cure not one not two but three injuries he had a damaged chest I feel like a character should like die maybe or like well maybe something worse than that. if they have like everything totally injured on them that would be like such a cool easter egg or you know a devastating one that would completely destroy your party but whatever um another cool like weird easter eggy kind of thing i guess since we're on the topic remember this ball here the orb of vilson um i have heard or i have read online that apparently, I don't know whether this is like an urban legend, I can't believe that this is, this is sort of like, oh, you can find Luigi in uh, in Super Mario 64 if you do all this ridiculous nonsense. Or like, you can find Mew without hacking the game if you do this crazy stuff. Apparently, I don't know whether it's true, if you have this equipped in your character's hand while three people are dead and they're the last one left alive, uh, and then you walk like a hundred paces, um, it starts talking to you, which would fit with the, the thing it's referencing. But uh, I don't know whether I really believe that. Anyway, so we've got some serious loot to be acquiring here. Kind of an interesting room. I was rambling about, you know, the clothes and stuff that you see all over the place. Well, this is where it really dawned on me first time. that It's what the rattlings are wearing. Because look at the room. It's, it was full of rattlings and it's also full of clothes. Got some uh, throwing axes here, which we don't care about. Got some cheese. Uh, Tikrit is just going to have so much cheese. It's unbelievable. A potion of resurrection too, I guess, to replenish some of our supplies. I'm so sad at how much I squandered so many <laughs> of these things. It's like unbelievable. Here, we'll put this on Loto Patho here. More vitality for him. Like, I mean, just so many resources we've gone through. We've got two crystal shards of healing. Uh, we're about to get another crystal shard of prote protection, so that'll be nice. I think um, we haven't ever used one of these either, right? But this is just for an enchantment, so I doubt we'll probably use them too much. I don't know. Uh, the black moss. The black moss is pretty bad. We only have three now. I had so many more when I came here at this point on my test file. Can you guys hear that? Uh, there's just going to be a lot of construction noise. We're just going to have to put up with it. Um, so, yeah, uh, we actually find two keys in this room. This is one of them. Uh, and the other one, I believe, is dropped uh, over here. So I think one is dropped by the rattling boss himself. And the other one is just sort of in the, on the floor in the room. Now, people talk about weird strategies. I've had two people actually message me. One person was in a comment, and someone else told me specifically that the way they got through this was by grabbing the key when they were, like, super under underleveled. And this guy's really, really hard. Grabbing the key and then unlocking the thing, having the rattling boss chase him out into the regular sewers and then dropping on him from above. Which sounds ridiculous to me and very complicated, but apparently more than one person's done it, so yeah. The uh, fight actually reminds me an awful lot of... Um the start of uh, one of my favourite all-time games, like my most nostalgic game to exist, a game called Little Big Adventure 2, that sort of starts with you fighting this big, uh, I can't remember what it's called, like a big basically hairy rat warg guy, and it's just basically exactly like the rattling boss, which uh, made this a very pleasant fight for me, which I never mentioned last episode. You get an achievement in this room if you've been playing just like me. This is the last skull in the game when I picked this up on my first file. I did get a ding. I got the headhunter achievement, just as it was there in Grimrock 1. So that leaves us with uh, eight skulls in total in Grimrock 2 unless there's like more in the achievement just props early which I cannot imagine so uh, so yeah that we don't get to see but this is where you get one of your achievements and Jonker is now at max strength um, I never pointed out but uh, actually hold on did I do that one thing I was doing at one point when Jonker was getting very burdened down was I actually use all four of these crystal flowers with blood drop caps to give him loads of strength just to increase his carry capacity without having to trade into athletics as far as I can see from this playthrough, every single skill tree I'd love to go in really deep, except athletics. I don't know, it just feels like kind of a bit of a lame tree. I don't know, it's totally not necessary, right? The armor is more important than anything else. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that's one of the achievements you're going to get. We've okay, got some more cheese here that was through these grates we actually grabbed some from before. Get crit getting a little bit full here. Get some cannonballs. Now, the cannonballs actually mean something now. Now, most of them, if not all of them, we've dropped off actually in the vault or the, the hub, sorry. Um, so, we cannot really do very much with this weapon, but let's pick up the hand cannon. This looks really fun. Ticker actually can't walk around with it because it weighs 15 kg, like very, very heavy. Jonker's okay with it, though. So, here we go. Uh, this is the hand cannon. It's a firearm. 
requires firearms for. We're not even proficient enough in weapons to use it yet. And the special ability Big Shot requires five. Commonly found on ship decks, this cannon has been modified by rattling mechanics to be more portable. I love the fact that this is literally just a cannon from a ship that they've managed to tweak in some way. Uh, six second cooldown, it's got a range of three squares and uh, as you can see a massive damage range on there. Big Shot I'm guessing is just the default attack that the Rattling Boss was using. Really cool. Uh, and if we do end up in firearms, unless there's something even cooler, which I think there might be, uh, this could be something we'll be seeing Tikrit doing if he can race there. Now don't forget we are going as fast as we can. We've got him on the Spirit Mirror Pendant. We're making sure he's not dead for, through any fights. I think I can grind XP off screen and stuff so it's okay. If, if you know, push comes to shove. So uh, that's that. And um, here we get another cannonball, which Ticker can hold here. I think that's pretty much everything in this room, and another cannonball. I mean, we're not going to need super, super amount of them. I kind of went into this game a little bit with my uh, original sort of OCD-ish mentality, in which I'm saying to myself, oh, I have to pick up everything, but it's clear that there's more than enough ammo in the game that you can just start dropping things around. Anyway, so yeah, that's that chamber completely done. We don't, uh, should we keep the notes? Yeah, alright. I like the idea of having a big collection of notes. So, uh, now what did we get? Well, we got two keys. One of them we have to use to get out, so we really only get one key. So now we're looking at all of these chambers we were browsing around before and thinking to ourselves, oh god, where do we put this key in? Except, um, it's sort of like an illusion of choice. I thought that the sewers was going to have this interesting thing where, uh, like, you would use a key in any door you want, you'd go in and you'd find another key that would take you back out and maybe you could use one of these or something. But no, instead, um, it's just an illusion of choice. Like, you might think, oh, I'll put it in the shortcut lock. No, that doesn't work. Um, there is only one place that you can put this key, uh, over here, and this is the reservoir access, okay? Um, so this is where we'll be heading to. Yeah, as I pointed out in the last episode, we've really explored a lot of this area. And things get a bit odd in the sewers now. This, like, little chamber we're heading into in a second confuses me a little, but okay. Uh, here we got some fish. Here we got some anti-venom. God, I'm barely ever using the anti-venoms, eh? It'd be cool if you could, like, mix potions together. That's what you could do on, like, the old Might and Magic and stuff. That was pretty badass. Okay, so, uh, we come here. We get a, uh, switch. We get a room filled with spikes, which is moving around in here. There's a secret in this room as well, which we'll grab in a second. And, uh, this closed-off gateway here. Well, this is gonna open up this, so we'll look through. And this whole, this whole section here, I just don't understand it fully. Basically, this is, like, a middle section. Uh, it will take us back to the start of the, uh, sewers. Here we go, so we can do this. And if you remember over here, um, we never like explored before, but it was just like this uh, sealed off room. Well, that's the spike room we were just looking in a second ago. Down the ladder, there is nowhere else to explore. It's just where we were before. So that leaves us with coming down here. And um, there's this big room here, which was the secret room. We're now on the other side. So we're just sort of looping back around to where we were before. Sand and starving. That's fine. We come into this chamber here. And uh, this is just a bit weird to me. Like, why are there all these like mining bits of equipment here? What, what, what is the deal? Well, basically, you know these faces that were looking in at us? We're going to pull this lever, and what the lever will do is open up a bunch of doors. Doors that we could never open until we got this key, okay? So it just gives us a lot more freedom of movement throughout the sewers. Um, and that's about it. Like, there is no, like, deeper meaning to this area. You will get fired at by these poison bots, so you want to move quite carefully like so when the doors open and you'll avoid both of these bolts. But there's no, like, secret puzzle. I thought we'd be re redirecting, like, bolts all the way through and then firing into the faces or something. No, it's just, uh, it's just, hey, there you go. Here's a big chunk of the dungeon with real, no real drops, no real secrets, no nothing going on. Just, uh, just some doorways you can open up. And I don't know. Is it just me? Am I rambling about this or is this genuinely a bit odd to you guys? Anyway, so, uh, really all we've got is this spike room. And let's have a look at what we can do in here. Uh, now I will be saving in a second for here, but basically we've got, um... A uh, gateway through there, which we already saw. That's the save crystal. That's fine. Here we get, um, I believe this wall here will open up to reveal a secret for us at one point. Uh, we get like an upper path, which we can travel along here. And we'll be able to worm our way under. Uh, here we get another gate, which again just looks back into somewhere we already were. Maybe it's just to sort of feel like a sewer and in mechanically it doesn't mean so much. It's probably like the opposite of the... the um, uh, the cemetery. Here we get some bugs trying to kill us. Now our ultimate goal here is to open this gate and at the bottom of the gate you'll see this note which says follow the leader says uh, Jonker informs us. So what does this mean? We've got to go down there um, and there's these spikes that can look really really random with how they're moving around but they're basically just snaking around constantly on the same pattern and what we need to do is follow them, treat the spikes as the leader and by doing this we, um, if everything goes correctly, we will not get impaled. So, um, first you need to decide where to begin, and I guess that's the main part of this puzzle. And as far as I remember, it's been a couple of days since I did this now. As far as I remember, we start... 
not at the well you're gonna end you're gonna end over there so what do we start here do we start yeah we have to we must have to start here and then press that switch that can't be right no, 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 that's not right. We're gonna go. We're gonna start there later. Where was the beginning, guys? Um. Okay. Um. Okay. Oh my God! I did not need to do that. Okay, it's fine. We won't be in any danger. We just. Wow. How did I manage to walk through there? You just want to follow the spikes around. There you go. Uh, the goal is that there's a whole bunch of buttons in this pit. We have to start at the right spot so that we can press the earliest button and then just sort of zigzag our way along, hitting all of them. I think this is the start here. I think this is it. So we're gonna wait for this spike. There we go. And now we're gonna chase. And we need to click the buttons as best we can. Hold the cursor as comfortably... Oh, god damn it. I went the wrong way. I think we might have messed this up. Gonna do this, then this. We might get hit again. Up we go. Alright, we managed to do it. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, no, 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 no. Up, 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 up. Oh, wow, did they follow us down? Okay, okay, okay. No! They managed to kill Saturn! Oh, I'm so sad. Ah, oh, we're right next to the save crystal, though. It's fine. Wow, that was ridiculous! I should not have moved to the side. All I had to do was hit the fire glyph and I panicked and freaked out. Oh my god. Okay, well look, there you go guys. So that's basically the way this works. We're going to come back through here. Hit the save crystal. Start abusing these. Jeez, there is no way I'm using any more resources here. And I guess he's hungry, so he might not have even killed it, to be honest, because... Hungry spells, stuff like that. Alright, um, so now we've opened that door, we can actually make a little bit of progress. There is a secret here, though. Uh, what you want to do is, with a keen eye, I believe it's against this wall here... Have a look. You want to drop down to an area, basically, that you normally wouldn't be from down here. Where is it? Oh my god, this is bad. Is it there? No, it's not there. How am I so safe down here? This place is literally a death trap, and I'm totally fine. Alright, okay, that's that's not so fine. There's a secret button down here, guys. I promise you. Is it on the underside of these? No. Nobody die, please. You'll notice, of course, the power gem is right there, but uh, we, have, we have things to do first. Come on. Um, this is, uh, I mentioned last episode, by the way, that there was a really difficult secret or one hard secret in the sewers. This is the one I'm talking about. I feel like this is really challenging because you've got your mindset on other stuff. I mean, it's the perfect place for a secret, but you're, you're going to be so uh, strictly focused on pressing those buttons in time and scared of the, the, the uh, spikes. I don't know. I think um, it would be very easy to miss. So what? It must be under one of these things. Okay, let's try this again, I think. Alright, so I had to rest by the save crystal as well, so we are still wasting resources. Um, but basically, you've got... I, I swear, it should just be on the left of the ladder as we climb up, because this area wouldn't you wouldn't actually regularly be encouraged to travel to. Why can't I see it, then? Why? I don't understand. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, my God, there. Good, go, go, climb, 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 climb. Thank you. So there you go, there's the hidden button. Jeez, I thought I'd have a little bit of an issue in there, but not so much of one. Okay, and yes, we got hit by the spikes again, but that's fine. And I know you're probably all watching with bated breath expecting me to fall down there accidentally. Here we go, we find a secret. This will, like, tantalize you from inside that room otherwise. Uh, and here you go, this is the green crystal I told you guys we were going to be getting earlier. This is another crystal shard of protection, so uh, there you go. That should be uh, useful later. Now, we also get um, a pretty cool Archmage, uh, piece of the Archmage's set. Remember, we already had the Scapula. I sort of consider the Divinus Cloak. I don't know. It sort of looks like it's the same thing. Anyway, check it out. So, uh, this is the Archmage's cap. This is Protection plus three, Willpower plus one. Headwear is of great importance to many mages, since the Academy of Deaths regards the head as the most potent source of magical energy within the body. Wouldn't it be weird to have like a fantasy series where it's like your feet is the most potent area of magic in your body? So, uh, we'll drop that down there. And um, I guess um, I, I want to enjoy this set, but then we've also got the crystal set and stuff, so enjoy this while it lasts, I suppose, guys. And there you go. Um, so now that we've got the secret, we can actually head into that large chamber there. Now, that's pretty much the end of the series. It was my plan to be out of the series pretty much already by now, but okay. Uh, if we have a look in, this is the room where I was trying to find another secret earlier. We get our final power gem. How cool is this? So we're also getting our faces torn off by bugs, but that's okay. They only do one damage now. They tickle us. I'm waiting specifically for the fire because I love setting these guys on fire to kill them rather than anything else. They're also, I guess, pretty evasive, but whatever. All right, so yeah, we get the final power gem. Look at this. How unceremonious was that? Jeez. Well, there you go. Oh, beautiful. And uh, the game's probably going to blow your guys' mind about these very shortly. So there we go. Um, and we could just leave, but there is a secret in this room in the waters. We're going to just explore these pathways first. Actually, it's a huge room for how little there is to do here. You've got a, a lockpick on there. This uh, on the left is our first glimpse that we had when we very first fell into the sewers, so that's always quite nice. I like entering it from there, just for that reason, pretty much. So there we go, we get another lockpick. Got plenty of those. Over here, you will find... Um, oh no, are we in the right area? 
Yeah, let's climb up this ladder here, shall we? There we go. And get back up onto these uh, bridges. We'll move along over here. Yeah, it's just such a huge room, isn't it? And it's kind of weird, actually. Why don't I remember anything going on in this room at all? I mean, we've got this chest. I'm pretty sure this was a mimic when I last fought it. Just just throwing it out there. And look, you can't actually attack them. Uh, a lot of people will ask me to check that kind of thing. You cannot do it. So here we go. All right, he wasn't a mimic. Anyway, and we blast ourselves with fire. That's fine. Here we get some Biro Rat Shank. This food always reminds me of Grimrock 1. I miss tar beads. Who remembers the tar beads, guys? And how I used to call them tar bread, yeah? Oh, those were good times, right? That chamber over there we've already been in. This is the glimpse. That's the secret we got in the last room. And um, that would be your only suggestion or inkling that maybe you missed something in the sewers. Like I said, I totally missed it my first trip through. And then I came in this room and I was like, what the hell? What's that room? Spent ages trying to figure it out and realized it was down there with the spikes. So uh, we're just going to sort of swim around for a second. Hopefully not drown. Uh, here we get some etherweed. And there on the left, you guys should have just seen it, we see, we find a door. Now this door, oh god, this is pretty bad. Come on, up you get, guys. Up you get, up you get, up you get. Now this door um, is the last secret in the sewers. The way we enter it is there's a secret button. Why, are, oh god, we're going to go through another one of these things now. Where I'm looking for secret buttons forever, aren't, aren't we? Uh, actually, I think it's even further back along in this direction. There you go, I just saw it, I literally just saw it. So it's actually against this pillar sort of facing the door. Um, it could have been anywhere in the water in this room, and it would have been like one of these find a needle in a haystack style things. But there you go, you get the button. I'm, I'm actually going to try and rush it. We get just a single bag in here. In a previous episode, I think last episode, we actually picked up a bag on our way into the secret room with all the fish. And uh, I never opened it, so I'll do that with you guys now. See, we got this one here. This is a potion of vitality, which Loto Pafo can enjoy. And um, I guess we'll drop the sack. And this one here had a bunch of alchemy stuff, including a mortar and pestle, funnily enough. Which uh, I'm not going to keep with me because it's just weight that we don't need to have carrying around. It's kind of cool to see them just out there in the in the ground like that. But yeah, so there you go. Um, look, we got ten more blood drop caps. Look at this. There are so many. It's unbelievable. There we go. Got a couple more. And uh, so that's what we've been finding in those sacks for those secrets. It's not the hugest of secrets in the world, but uh, that is one here in this giant underwater room. And I think that's it. Uh, I mean, really, uh, what what else is there to say? It's kind of frustrating actually. Here we've got this doorway, which is where we entered. We haven't mapped out this tiny little bit here, so. Let's just have a quick look around in the water. Oh, Loto Pafo feels strong. That means sun just set. Uh, and that's it pretty much, guys. There you go. Um, big room. I actually think that the sewers has been a lot more fun, a lot more well-designed than a lot of stuff that I enjoyed in the cemetery, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's this dungeon floor done. Let's head outside. And let, let's not just head outside. Let's go specifically back upstairs to where the uh, friggin uh, Shrine of Air was. I'm also en route because I'm not sure how quickly it happens. People have been telling me that apparently those fish do respawn in that secret. So we're totally going to go check that out. It's a bit of a meander to get back to where we want to be, but... It's nothing too bad, but if, as long as we come over here, we should be back into the regular sewer complex. And then the fish room, the fish secret, was directly across from us. So yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll check that. I will cut it, and um, I'll see you guys in a second. Oh god, okay, so three of us are starving now. Brilliant, it's like the old days, guys. Alright, here we go. We're outside. We're in the dead of night. Let's go to the shrine. Oh, who would have thought this would be happening so quickly? I mean, we just have so many gems while we were out there in the, the cemetery. So here we go. We got one. We got two. We got three. We got four. Oh, yes. Fuse! Oh, look at that. Brilliant. So here we have the essence of air, guys. Our final essence! Oh, my goodness. But uh, So we could put this into the, uh, the castle next. But then what about all this other stuff? What about, um... Follow the footsteps of Kilhagen the Wise? Well, we shall see. There was something else too. There was a face here that told us if you wish to enter the crystal mines, you must take the way of the snail. What on earth could that mean? And also, why might I ask? There you go, out of a really sneaky cut there. Is it that when we're out here in the hamlets, we still have a lot of places to explore? And in particular, if you look, for example, oh no, the House of Braids isn't where we want to look. Where do we want to look? We want to look uh, this way. Why is it if we have a look over here at um, the House of Needles? You can quite clearly see... Oh, there it is. Uh, a power gem. There we go. Wow, that was the most broken commentary I've ever done. Another power gem. What the heck? 
Well, I would guess uh, we'll have a look into that next episode. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, for what it's worth as well, if you want to watch more LPs type stuff over on Matt's channel today, um, I was playing Don't Starve together with him, which was a hilarious game. Uh, really fun. I think he's going to have one or two episodes of that going out. There'll be a link in the description if you want to check it out. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow for more, uh, for more Grimrock and some answers.